Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the uh, Laboratory for Paleoclimatology at the University of Ottawa. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing the uh, ocean uh, behavior. Uh, we, we know, of course, that a very strong El Nino is underway, which is affecting ocean temperatures in the Pacific, but that's having also an impact with climate change on cold blobs, warm blobs, etc in both the Pacific and Atlantic basins. So I'll be discussing what's happening, what the currents are doing, and uh, try to figure out what's going on and uh, what will ha likely happen in the near future. So what we have is a climate reanalyzer, and uh, it's showing the temp sea surface temperature here. And I can bring this down and show you the global picture. So you can see the warm water, 30, 35 degrees Celsius, 86 to 95 Fahrenheit uh, around the equator here. And you can see the, the um, El Nino effect is going on here. You can see the divisions of temperature. Um, so when we go from about that 35 degrees close to zero uh, up towards the uh, poles. So what this next uh, plot is showing is the sea surface temperature anomaly. Um, and that's the departure um, from average, from the average. Um, and what you can see here is you can see that the Gulf Stream is coming up here. And there's a very cold part here. And there's this cold blob and the, the, the temperature of the the Gulf Stream that comes across and heats um, Europe, there's parts of it that are coming up and it's kind of like the anomaly, if you look at it, it's kind of winding its way up here past Greenland all the way up off, um, off Norway here, coming right up to, to where the sea ice is. So we've got this positive temperature anomaly all the way up here. Normally the Gulf Stream would come more across this way, but it's blocked. So it can go underneath, or it can go to, to the south of it, or it can go to the north of it. So this is kind of what we're seeing. Um, and again, if you go to the sort of global picture, you can see the very warm uh, water here from the El Nino. You can see the warm temperatures here and up up Norway. There's also patches down here. So. This is a view from Earth uh, Null School. It's showing what the uh, ocean currents are doing. So we've got the Gulf Stream winding up here and vortices spinning off and it hits a cold pool of water and it tries to uh, spread out. It tries to go through and it's broken up. So there's streams coming up here, streams coming up here and as I met, as I showed in the temperature anomaly, there's parts that are warmer than normal coming right up here. Um, so you can see sort of typical speeds here, you know, a meter per second, up, you know, uh, 1.5 meters a second, things like that um, in the uh, current flow. So what we've got here is this is looking at the wave height uh, in the North Atlantic. And what we can see here is the waves here in this region are eight, nine meters, typically, off the British Isles. Okay, and then the waves here are even higher, they're 12 meters over 10 meters is in this area right here. So very high waves. And the reason why these waves are here is because you have the, you have, uh, this is a pressure map, surface pressure. And you can see that there's a, there's a couple of very low pressure areas here. So these are cyclones. So the, so the low, low pressure area, pressure is higher here. It's, the air is coming in. It's deflected to the right by the Coriolis, sets up these cyclone patterns here and here. Um, the pressure is 950 hexapascals in here. Um, 
985 in this region. So that's a strong, and over here is, is closer to a thousand, over a thousand. So what we're seeing is um, the, this low pressure area has very, very high wind. If you look at the surface winds in this region, then you can see this sort of thing. So these winds uh, here are 80 kilometers an hour, 70 kilometers an hour, but in this region here, they're reaching 130 kilometers an hour. This, is, this would be category one uh, type, type winds. Um, so we're seeing these two st storms here that are creating the uh, strong wave action here and here. Um, now, if we look at the um, look at the uh, sea surface temperature anomaly, uh, what we what we're seeing is the strong El Nino here, uh, three point seven degrees above normal. 3.3, just to give you an idea, so 3, 2.8. So this whole area is above 3, reaching up almost as high as 4 degrees warmer than normal. Not quite. Um, and But what we're seeing is we're seeing it starting to break up a little bit here. We're seeing there's still warm water here, but it's not in the 3 degree. It's closer to the 2 and below in these red areas. So the, the El Nino is still very, very strong, but you can see signs on the easternmost part of it cooling down. Now, if you, could, if you remember, there used to be a really warm blob sitting here and a warm blob sitting off of California for the longest time. And when the El Nino started up, those blobs became amplified in temperature. They picked up, but they've decreased uh, since then. And uh, you have this cold water pool coming across here, which is kind of, so, so that signature warm blob here has dissipated. So it'll be interesting when the El Nino vanishes, whether or not it will come back. I expect that it would. And this is Japan over here. And what we can see is the uh, Kuroshio current is coming up here, hitting this uh, cold water and it's, it's uh, trying to get through there. So it's running a little bit further south, uh, but it runs up off, off of Japan. Um, if we look in the uh, North Atlantic, you can see the very, very strong uh, Gulf Stream coming up here. Um, and I just uh, touched the screen. So you can see the water temperature, the temperature anomaly, 7.1 degrees Celsius here over here, six or something, and let's see, I think it's about four there, six and a half. Okay, so you can see, you can see this uh, temp, the Gulf Stream cutting into the cold blob, and it's coming up here, and you can see it sort of traveling up all the way off Norway very, very clearly. So uh, some of it's coming down further south, but most of it is trying to cut through that cold water. Um, this is, would be undercutting the glaciers off Greenland, increasing the melt, and it's coming up here giving heat. So rather than just coming straight across to, to uh, Europe, uh, Spain and the UK, it's coming up further north uh, to uh, the Scandinavian countries. Um, over here. This is a closer view of what's happening in the North Atlantic. So you can see the, the fine structure here and uh, you can see uh, the, the temperatures in this region. There we go, 7.6 degrees, 8.7 degrees warmer than normal, 8.5. Okay, so right here is really, really warm water uh, from the Gulf Stream and it's trying to cut through and you can see some cold areas coming down here uh, and cold fingers coming through. So this is minus six degrees colder than normal versus plus 8.7 degrees. And this is warm in the vicinity. So we've got water here plus four right next to water here, which is minus uh, six degrees, 10 degree temperature difference, very, very strong. Uh, gradient, very strong winds, and you can see how it winds its way up here as it's cutting through the blob. 
Um, this is the temperature. Uh, this is not the anomaly now, this is the, the temperature. So what you see here is you get this water coming here. This is a few degrees and the white finger here is actually colder. Okay, this water is is uh, very close to zero, this finger of water coming through on the surface. And then you get this water here is uh, eight and a half degrees. This will be about the same. And then this water is about nine or 10 degrees. So what you can see is you can see a battle here between the warm water from the Gulf Stream, which is trying to carry up here, provide bringing heat up, and, and uh, so that you can see this warm air, it's not succeeding up in this area, it's coming up here, and then you see the cold water from the Arctic. So you've got the sea ice coming out and melting, you've got the um, melt water, which is at zero, coming down, or slightly below zero, coming down through the Fram Strait, through the Nair Strait. So you get this battle between the cold and the warm water. Um, so Europe stays warmer because of this a lot of, about a lot of the heat is coming from the Gulf Stream and over, but what you can see is a battle here. And if there's enough melt uh, from Greenland, if the melt from Greenland and sea ice greatly accelerates, then that water will come further down. And if it comes down here and cuts off Europe, then a couple things happen. You're, first of all, Europe gets a lot colder, um, you know, pretty quickly. And also this water can no longer come up. So it comes across down here. And because it's kind of blocked, the water piles up here, which causes a sea level rise across the east coast of the US. And it causes extremely warm temperatures off of the coast of the US. So let's uh, come and have a look here. We'll go back over to the Pacific side here. Let it refresh. Okay, so this is the this is the very very warm water near the equator. Of course, any water um, greater than twenty six and a half degrees is enough to start uh, is enough to to cause increases in cyclones in in in, in uh, hurricanes or typhoons or cyclones, they will cause amplification if you get the rotation starting in that warm water. And uh, you can see that the water, um, the, the water, you know, is warm plus 10 degrees or so up this re in this region. And this is where the colder water is from, is coming through from here. Um, so, so you can see, well, let's have a look at Antarctica. We don't want to leave Antarctica out. What's going on with the waters down there? So, so you can see, uh, that the water temperature is cold around Antarctica. Okay. I mean, don't forget that seawater freezes at about that minus 1.8 degrees Celsius. So this is meltwater coming off here. Um, you can see uh, sort of what's, what's happening with the situation there. So the key thing um, for us is the, uh, what's going on up in the Arctic and uh, what's happening with the, look at the warm water coming up in here. Let's, turn it to what we're used to here, the view, and wait for it to refresh. And you can see this warm water up in this region here, okay, which I pointed out before, some of it's getting quite far. So 8.4 degrees getting quite far up into, into the uh, Arctic region. So the, uh, the, the key thing is that the we're getting incursions of extremely warm air uh, because of the nature of the jet streams. We'll just go and show you the jet streams here. Uh, air, wind at 250. Okay, we'll cut this off here. And 